What's up, everybody? It's AJ with eTrailer.com. Today, we're going to be checking out the Rhino Rack J Style Kayak Carrier. It's going to be a good option to carry one kayak, but it's got a universal fit, fits on a lot of different roof racks, and it's adjustable. So, you can adjust the back cradle forward all the way. So, let's say you remove the kayak, you can fold that down, it's out of the way, you don't have to remove it from the roof. Or if you just need a little more tilt or an angle on it, you can bring it back a little bit and adjust it to whatever boat or kayak you're putting up there. Now it does hold up to 99 pounds, so keep that in mind with whatever kind of kayak you want to throw in there before you continue washing, but let's check it out. This J-Style kayak carrier has a couple extra features that other ones don't. For instance, around the back side, you'll see a paddle holder. So that's nice, you can get the paddle up and out of the vehicle. You don't have to find another place to store that. You can see there's still plenty of room with the J-Style where it doesn't take up the entire roof versus saddle style that kind of sit in the middle. You can't really fit two kayaks. You could probably fit another one of these on there and take two kayaks, but actually with this one, it has an accessory you can get. You add to it to put a kayak on the other side using the same cradle you can add another kayak to the other side. So that's kind of a cool option if you just start out with one kayak and you find somebody else you want to kayak with or whatever, and all of a sudden you need to take two, you can expand this rack to carry two. So I like that as an option just so you're not stuck with just buying a whole new rig just to do that. You can actually add on to it and invest in it. We have a direct comparison today with the e-trailer J-Style kayak carrier. So we're gonna put that on the table and get right to it, kind of comparing them so that you'll know what I'm talking about as we go through the rest of the video. You can take a look at their differences here, and we have them on the roof of the car, so we can check them out there as well. Keeping them both upright like they would be on your roof, we can just go ahead and look at, first off, this part is a little bit longer here. This part of the cradle comes out more. This one's a little bit more aggressive of an incline, so maybe when you're going to load a kayak, it's gonna be a little harder if you're shorter to lift this one up and over this, put it down to place. Where this one comes out a little bit longer and is not as aggressive of an incline, so you can probably get it to right here and then slide it down into place. Now the pads, the next thing I wanna talk about, this one is more rigid. You see it doesn't have any give. Now this is rubberized still, so when the kayak hits that, it's gonna get it to stop when it leans against there. You don't have to worry about that, but you can see I can't push that in at all. If we go to the e-trailer one, this one sags a little bit, so you see I can push down on that, and it moves. So if you have a heavier kayak, it will go down on there and push down on that center part. So essentially, it could be resting on just the bolts right here. If it's like a fishing kayak that are heavier, you can get that to go down quite a bit. It looks like the rubber still stays up and above the bolts, so it probably won't scratch it up, but you run that risk if it is really heavy. Up here on the roof, we want to take a look at how it actually folds down. So the each other one also folds down. So that's nice when it's not in use, you can get it out of the way. However, the system that it uses, these levers, has the same teeth and rotation that the Rhino Rack one does. It's just a little bit more aggressive to throw those latches. You see, pushing back on it takes, takes a little bit and it has an aggressive snap when you get there. That one was a little easier on that side. You move it down into place like that. You got to make sure that's lined up. Those teeth like that, right there, it's folded down and out of the way. Now some things you might not see is that there's no numbers here, so you can't really know where this one's set. The one thing I liked on the Rhino Rack one is it's got a number on all these teeth to let you know if you're operating one, I can set this one to five and automatically know I gotta put the other one at five. I don't have to put that guesswork in. With the each other one, we do have to kind of guess the angle that the cradle, the back cradle is at and try and match that up just by looking at it and going, that looks about right there. Lock it in place, you find out, I'll actually have to bring it up a little bit more. The other thing to think about is what they're made out of. So it's gonna be a steel with a black powder coat finish on them. So if it gets scratched up at all, it'll still take out some of that black powder coat, but it's gonna be resistant to rust and corrosion. Now with the e-trailer one, it's gonna be made out of aluminum. You can see a little bit of wear and tear on it already because it doesn't have that coating and that's from loading on lower that kayak. So it will scratch it up but it's aluminum, so you don't have to worry about rust corrosion with this one either. Went ahead and removed the kayak, so we can take a closer look at the carrier itself. Now, our Ryan Rack 1 is going to be made out of a black powder coat steel. Still lightweight, and it's not like it's heavy or anything, but the black powder coat is going to be a little more abrasive. But one thing to be worried about is if that black powder coat does kind of get chipped away, there could be issues of rust and corrosion. But as long as it stays on there and there isn't any big chips or scratches, it should be fine. Comparing it to the e-trailer one, that one's going to be made on aluminum, so it isn't going to rust or corrode at all. Other features I like with the Rhino Rack one versus the e-trailer is you got the paddle holder built into it right here on both the carriers, so that's kind of nice. You can get that up and out of your vehicle as well. With the e-trailer one, you'll have to find a different spot for it. Then also the numbers on the latches here when you go to adjust this. I like that there is just numbers 
There's an indicator right here, lets you know what number it's set at. So once I do this one, I can see it's at five and I know to do the same thing for this one over here. It really takes out the guesswork. Then, of course, how it attaches, because some people might not want to leave it on there all the time. You want something that's easy to put on there and take off. Now, when it's not in use, you can fold it down still. So you can put it in this position if you don't feel like taking it off. Maybe you go kayaking quite often. You don't see, think it's worth it to remove it. You can just leave it like that. It's still low clearance. But if you're worried about it and you want to take it off of there, let me fold this back up. You see, that's just showing how easy it is to adjust it back and forth, too. Underneath, you've got big hand knobs with a plate. You can just unscrew those. I like that there's no tools involved. Each other one doesn't have tools either, just the knobs are a little bit smaller. So I kind of like how big these hand knobs are. It just makes it easier to get a grip on them. That way you can loosen it or really tighten it on there. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it completely so you can see it. And even the trick is you don't have to undo both of them because just enough to get this plate to slide out. Then you can rotate it out of the way. Looks like I need to go a little bit more. So it drops down, out of the way, that easy to remove. You can see the screws that are dropped in through there, or the bolts. And when you go to put it on there, you just put it around your bar, just like that. Make sure you get it lined up with your other one. Swing this back over. I would definitely install that plate before with that hand knob. That way you can only need one hand to hold that plate up and then reattach that hand knob. One thing to look out for is make sure you got that clearance on the roof. We got a rise because we've got raised rails here and the roof rack system. So I got plenty of room to get down in there and start tightening down that hand knob. I just wanted to show you the process of putting the each other one on too. This is the smaller hand knob here. I'm trying to get as much of that bolt exposed so I can get a couple turns on it to tighten it down. I got it started there. Do both of these. Now it's not like super difficult or anything, but it is a lot harder than that nice hand knob on the Rhino Rack one that was just easy to grip and get it tightened down quicker. Another thing you can see without the kayak in place is the foam padding here. So it's not just foam like the each other one. This one's actually rubber coated. So it's got a little bit of a finish on there. I think it's gonna last a little bit longer that way. You know, the longer it sits out in the sun, the more times you put the wet kayak on there, that's gonna eventually absorb into straight up foam. This has that covering so the water will beat off of there and it will last a lot longer. Now we're gonna measure from the top of our crossbar to the top here on our kayak here just to see how much it adds to the top of your roof bar. So it looks like it's three and five eighths of an inch is what it's gonna to add to the top. So just keep that in mind with clearance levels, being like your garage, your parking spot, even in a lower spot, you're still gonna have that added height. Now let's get a measurement within its highest point. So you got the back cradle here, straight up. So if you were at this top of the crossbar, the top of that, it's gonna be 17 and three eighths of an inch up there. So that's how much it is. Now it might not, that's an extreme straight up and down. Like I said, you might have it tilted back just a little bit, which will take a little bit of that height out of there. So if you want to leave this up all the time, you see it go back a little bit and that takes a little bit of that height out of there. But I would definitely suggest folding it down when not in use. That way you don't have any garage clearance issues. Taking a closer look at the cradle that holds the paddle here. I flipped it around to this side just so it's easier to see. It's much like a cradle on a hang style bike rack. You see this part is rubberized with the grooves in there. They got a rubber strap that goes around to pull it up and over and attach it. Now, since it's rubber, it'll conform to the paddle so you don't have to worry about it scratching it or causing any issues. It'll be right here and hold it nice and tight. Set it into place just like that. With this in place, we, went up, we put the straps on there first. So what we did was we ran around the top. That way both ends were over here. Then what we want to do is bring it up and around the boat. Just like that. Bring it around front. Closer to right here. Make sure they don't get tangled up. Looks like I did get them tangled up just a little bit. Let's see. Get them in the right spot there. There we go, now I can even it out. So I'll pull this one back. I want the buckle to be more up on the kayak side. Get it about there. And we'll take the extra strap, go underneath our roof bar. So it grabs at the bottom and we'll run it through our buckle. Cinch it down like that. It's got a good hold there. Then we'll tie up our extra strap. We got a hook and loop fastener here. 
So we'll just tie up our extra and put it in that loop. With that wrapped around there, that's gonna hold that there. Another thing about the e-trailer kayak carrier is it comes with all the straps you need and whether we call it a dog bone or it's also a tie down point. So I can put this in the hood of the car because I don't have a loop or anything on the front of the vehicle to tie down to when we're doing the bow and stern straps. So if you look at the back side, there's a hitch and we use a safety chain loop to make that attachment. Up front, we don't have anything really to tie down to. I guess you could run the strap through some of the bars if you had a bar on the side or something, but this is just pretty easy accessory to get on the side. Now Reiner Rack does make their own so you can get your own version of their tie down point. You just, let's get it up here, out of the way. The slam in the hood and now you have a loop to tie down to when you add your straps. So it does come with the other straps, those are going to be the blue straps in your kit. So make sure you don't get those mixed up. The blue straps are for the bow and stern and the black ones are to hold the boat to the carrier. So then we'll come back with our loop and what we're going to do is run it through this loop here. I'll take this and run it through this loop up here. To get that evened out, we're gonna run it through our buckle and tighten it down. Let's get the buckle up and away from the vehicle. It's nice and tight right there. And then I'm gonna tie up the rest of our strap. Overall, I like what Rhino Rack did with their J-Style carrier. There's only a few things that kind of stand out as I didn't really like. Well. With the strap kit, I'm glad it included all the straps you need, but you did have to get a dog bone separately because most vehicles aren't gonna have a tie down point up front. Not a big deal, it's an accessory you can easily get, but the each other one has it included, so I kinda like that a little bit better. The other thing would be security, which is kinda hard with kayak carriers, you know, there's no way to lock this to your roof to make sure that nobody can mess with it when you're not around. However, the Yakima JLo comes to mind, it actually has lock cords that can be inserted so you can lock it to your roof, that way nobody can mess with it. The other thing that one does is that one can tilt up and be used as a post style kayak carrier so you can put another kayak on the other side of the cradle without having to buy that extension you have to if you want to carry two kayaks on this one. Again though, that might not be for you. You might be buying it just for one kayak to get on the road and this will work fine. If you have that tie down loop up front, it comes with all the straps and everything you need and holds that paddle up and out of the vehicle, giving you more room in there. Well, I think that about does it. Thanks for hanging out and I hope this helped.